These two are having a no engine race down the hill. <laughs> Just rolling, see who can win. No engine. That's the way the locals do it up here in the hills. We've seen that a lot. They conserve fuel because fuel is really hard to get and really expensive for the um, people that live in the, the hills, hill tribe people. So they'll ride with the engine up the hill and then every time there's a downhill section, they'll just turn it off and coast. Seen it so many times, you just hear the motion of a rolling vehicle coming very quietly and stealthily down the hill. Of course, us Westerners, we don't have to do that because we're just a bunch of hoons anyway, wasting fuel doing rev runs in the tunnel. That would be incredible if we could see. With a clear day, I'm sure the scenery would be incredible. Still pretty cool. Still enjoying this. Oh look, another tunnel. I don't think we'll stop playing this one. One tunnel's enough. Ah, it's only a baby tunnel. God, it's gotten misty now. I can hardly even see the guys in front. Oh, what have we got here? All of a sudden, buildings. Some government building. All the biggest, flashest buildings. Uh, government buildings. Gorillas in the mist, eh? A bunch of monkeys anyway. Even though visibility is very poor, it's still stunning to ride through. Just these trees popping out of the mist down in the valleys and this cloud everywhere. Still rather enjoyable, that's for sure. Oh, a waterfall. Woo! <laughs> when one sees a waterfall, one simply cannot go by without stopping taking photos. Have a look at that. That is pretty cool. Wow. That is awesome. Definitely photo worthy. Absolutely. And they're all pre-lined automatically. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Absolutely love it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Do love myself some waterfalls. Oh, Nelly. Get out of the way, dopey. Middle of nowhere. Absolute middle of nowhere. This is a village somewhere around the corner. I haven't seen anything for a long, long time. There's just cattle. <laughs> you see that quite a bit. It's like they just let their cattle just roam up the highway and maybe next week they'll come and grab them and take them back. See, the whole way along this Ho Chi Minh Highway through the mountains, you just see big piles of cattle shit everywhere. Pretty slippery stuff, you don't want to be breaking on that stuff. Come around the corner and splat! It's funny when you see the bike in front of you, you just hit it, it just uh, explodes everywhere, particularly the scooter. Not so much our XRs, but when the scooter hits a big pile of shit, it just goes splat. I stood in a big pile of it before, so currently at the moment, my uh, right boot is covered in shit. How dense that jungle is here. Wow. It's dropped down a fair bit of elevation over the last few kilometres and starting to get a bit more visibility now. We're heading in the direction of Da Nang and uh, Da Nang at the moment it's 33 degrees. It's a lot cooler than that up here. 
So we're looking forward to getting into some more heat. And hopefully it's dry down there. Just because it's hot doesn't mean it's going to be dry. We'll see what we get. Oh look, another waterfall. Beautiful. Got ten goats up in there, or more, probably a lot more. Ah, bit of a war bunker. So yeah, I'm assuming that would have been uh, a, some sort of a base of the the south because we are in the south here. We actually rode into the old North Vietnam a few days back, but Hawaii, where we've been basing ourselves, is in the south. It's at the northern end of the south, not far from where the old border was. Hello. Why'd the chicken cross the road? Because it had a death wish. A little bit of a village here. Some hill people going about their daily life, collecting sticks to make stuff, building materials. Some cows. Oh no, we've got traffic. Oh, what's going on here? Oh yeah, baby, it's a dry road. This is magnificent. A bit of dry, twisting road following the river out. Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about. God, all of a sudden there's heaps of traffic. Must be getting closer somewhere. I know the, uh, the town of Prow is 20 something kilometers away, but I don't know if these people come from there or what. 20 something kilometres doesn't seem far, but in this sort of country, yeah, it's a bloody long way. It takes, it, it takes forever to get there. Especially when you're going at the pace those guys do on their scooters. It's long enough for us, but they go a lot slower than we do. Oh, here we go. High fives with the kiddies. Yeah, Australia! Now, this scooter in front of us is definitely city person, nice shiny white shoes, nice shiny scooter, oh wow, big buildings, wow that's pretty cool, oh come on get up the hill, get up the hill, Oh man, I would love my V-Strom in this country. Man, these roads, the V-Strom would love it. Holy dooly. The view down there over all the village. Oh shit, we have to see at least the dry road. Yeah. I just started giving it a little bit more stick then, and it was just, yes! That's what it's all Stopped here on the side of the mountain road. Have a look at that down there. Got a bit of a village down there. You got the central communal area. That big thatched roof on the hut in the middle. Big open area where all the kids play sports. Not much else around here. This is actually a big town for what we've seen around here. Possibly. There's only a few shacks here and there, elsewhere. Well, it stopped raining now. We've come down out of the mountains. We're still fairly high in the hills. We're in a town called Prow. It is uh, somewhat dry, but looks like it's still beginning to threaten a little bit. So we're still wearing all our wet weather gear. We're going to head on down to lower levels and see what happens. We just had lunch here. It cost us $5.32 Australian for all of us to be fed and walk away full and happy. Pretty cool little place. <laughs> Good old time, the cat and puppy.
Mm. All right, get on our way and uh, see what happens later on. Just come down out of those big bad mountains up there in the clouds. Go down to the lower levels now. It's warmed up, it's dried. We've got some flat land ahead of us now all the way to the beach. There's no more hills. I've had a wet bum for the last, I don't know, three or four hours. Now I can get my bottom dry again. Man, that was insane. So many twisty corners. Not like in Australia where you go and you ride hours to get to a road that's got maybe an hour or two of twisties at the most. Here, you can ride twisties all day. We've certainly done that on this trip, but this time we're about probably five hours maybe, or more. Non-stop corners the whole way. Left, right, left, right, left, right. You're on it, brake, on it, brake. Awesome, so much fun. We're not doing high speeds. We're not on big bikes. But man, we're having fun. <laughs> These little things are perfect for Vietnam roads. Oh, I'm feeling a bit tired, so I think I might have a lay down. Ah, oh, so good to have the wet weather gear off to feel the wind. Have a look at that, would you? That is amazing. And the cemeteries, they just go right up the hills here. Best views in town are the cemeteries. They're massive. The biggest cemeteries I've ever seen here. Oh, I'm tired today. I'm starting to feel a little bit. I was tired before I came here. I've had a couple of days where I haven't felt so tired, but by the end of every day I'm pretty exhausted. I've been doing a lot of riding. A lot of late nights drinking, chatting, seeing the sights, sleeping in different beds, different places, not getting a, a really, really deep night's sleep. But I'm loving it. It's adventure, that's what it's all about. I need a rest, I need to see it all, see as much as I can in the time that I've got, which is very, very limited. It's probably the most industrial area I've seen, this part here, trucks everywhere coming and going from factories and quarries. You've got a farm here and there as well. 
white bridge for the trucks. Danang, 20 kilometers. The closer we get to Da Nang, the heavier the traffic gets, the more crazy it gets. We're probably getting into peak hour stuff too. So this could be a little bit insane. We made it to Da Nang. We are now in this nice hotel. I missed out on filming the last bit of the ride into Da Nang because my card was full. Uh, it was just too intense to stop and do anything about it. We were aiming to beat the daylight, get in before it got dark, and the traffic was just insane. We even had to ride on the footpath part of the way to get around the traffic because there was a bit of a detour and it all got uh, thrown down these tight little side streets instead of the big winding boulevards going along the river. But uh, that was okay, it was all good. Da Nang is a large, large city. It's uh, a very modern city, a lot of wealth here. It's uh, very nice, there's all sorts of things going on. It looks like a great city to hang out in and explore, which we'll be doing tomorrow, having a bit more of a look around. But it is in stark contrast to the hill tribes that we were visiting only a few hours ago. So we've gone from hill tribes with absolutely nothing but happy, to this thriving metropolis of a city on the coastline of Vietnam, Da Nang. Uh, does that make people happy here? Who knows? Maybe not with all this traffic and noise, chaos, but maybe they are. Time will tell. Anyway, we're going to go out and have something to eat later on tonight and do a bit of exploring and uh, we may end up staying here two nights. Not sure what we're going to do tomorrow yet, so stay tuned. The next video will uh, reveal all to you. Bye-bye. Now we're getting extreme. Now, yeah, this is an adventure. We've just climbed through a cave and up through the hole in the middle, got right to the top of the mountain. Have a look at that. That is pretty cool.